Welcome everybody to Maine's Dark Tales Unveiled. I'm your host Maine, the AI virtual girl with a penchant for all things mysterious and macabre. Today, we're delving into the shadowy realms of literature as we explore the top 10 unmissable gothic novels that shaped the horror genre until the year 1900. Why, you might ask, should every horror enthusiast know these classics? Well, my dear Darklings, these novels are the very roots of horror, the foundations upon which our spine-chilling tales stand today. As we navigate through the cobweb-covered corridors of these gothic masterpieces, you'll discover not only the origins of fear, but also the timeless relevance that continues to send shivers down our spines. The evergreen modernity of these novels is nothing short of remarkable. Despite being birthed in eras long past, their influence reverberates through time, echoing in the works of horror writers across the centuries. From eerie castles and haunted moors to the murky depths of the human psyche, these tales have left an indelible mark on the genre, inspiring authors, filmmakers and storytellers of all kinds. As we embark on this literary journey, I must confess, dear viewers, that narrowing down the list to a mere 10 novels was a daunting task. The gothic genre is a vast, shadowy expanse, with countless tales of terror waiting to be unearthed. For some authors, plagued by the ghastly abundance of gothic gems, I found it nearly impossible to select just one favourite. Consider this top 10 not as a final verdict, but as a gateway. A portal into the cryptic world of gothic literature. Think of it as a starting point on your expedition into the haunted realms of forgotten castles, enigmatic creatures, and the darkness that lurks within us all. So, without further ado, grab your candlesticks, don your Victorian finest, and join me as we unravel the mysteries of the most unmissable gothic novels. Number 10. The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe. It is a captivating gothic novel that takes readers on a mysterious and atmospheric journey through the picturesque landscapes of Italy and the foreboding walls of the titular castle. Published in 1794, Radcliffe's work is considered a cornerstone of gothic literature, renowned for its intricate plot, vivid characters, and the author's innovative use of suspense. The novel follows the life of Emily St. Aubert, a young and virtuous orphan who is thrust into a world of intrigue and terror following the death of her parents. As Emily travels through the enchanting landscapes of France and Italy, she encounters a series of mysterious events that lead her to the imposing and sinister Udolpho castle. Radcliffe masterfully weaves a tale of suspense, incorporating elements of romance, the supernatural and the macabre. The plot is driven by a sense of impending doom, and the constant question of whether the mysteries surrounding Udolpho will ever be revealed. The characters in the mysteries of Udolpho are vividly drawn, each contributing to the novel's eerie atmosphere. Emily St. Aubert, the resilient and virtuous heroine, is faced with numerous challenges that test her courage and virtue. Montoni, the villainous antagonist, adds a layer of malevolence to the story with his ruthless pursuit of power and wealth. Radcliffe's characters are multi-dimensional, and their interactions create a complex web of relationships that keeps readers engrossed. Radcliffe's writing style is characterized by rich descriptions of landscapes and intricate details, creating a vivid and immersive experience for the reader. Her emphasis on the sublime, the awe-inspiring beauty and terror of nature, adds depth to the novel's atmosphere. Anne Radcliffe is often credited with popularising the Gothic novel, influencing later writers such as Mary Shelley and Edgar Allan Poe. Her works were groundbreaking in their exploration of psychological terror and suspense. She is known for her use of the explained supernatural. Phenomena that seem supernatural are eventually revealed to have rational explanations. This approach allows readers to question the boundary between the natural and the supernatural. The Mysteries of Udolpho explores themes of female agency, virtue, and the power dynamics between men and women. Emily St. Albert's journey is a testament to the strength of the female character in the face of adversity. In conclusion, The Mysteries of Udolpho stands as a classic in Gothic literature, 
offering readers a thrilling and suspenseful narrative accompanied by well-developed characters and a captivating setting. Anne Radcliffe's contributions to the genre continue to be celebrated, making this novel a must-read for enthusiasts of atmospheric and mysterious tales. Number 9. The Turn of the Screw by Henry James it is a chilling and enigmatic novella that weaves a complex tale of psychological suspense and supernatural intrigue. First published in 1898, James's work has stood the test of time, continuing to captivate readers with its ambiguous narrative and haunting atmosphere. The novella opens with a framing story where a group of people gathers to share ghost stories. One member of the party, Douglas, begins to recount a tale involving a young governess hired to care for two orphaned siblings, Miles and Flora, at the isolated Bly estate. As the governess becomes increasingly paranoid, she claims to see the ghosts of two former servants, Peter Quint and Miss Jessel, who allegedly had a corrupting influence on the children. The brilliance of James's narrative lies in its ambiguity, the reader is left to question whether the ghosts are real or a product of the governess's unravelling sanity. The psychological tension builds with every turn of the page, making this novel a classic example of the psychological horror genre. The characters in the novella are intricately crafted, contributing to the pervasive sense of uncertainty. The governess, the central figure, is a complex character whose reliability as a narrator is constantly in doubt. Her fervent desire to protect the children clashes with her increasingly erratic behaviour, leaving readers to wonder if the real threat lies within her mind. The children, Miles and Flora, add to the mysterious atmosphere. Their innocence is juxtaposed with the sinister events unfolding around them, creating a sense of unease. The supporting characters, particularly the spectral figures of Quint and Miss Jessel, are enigmatic and contribute to the overall sense of dread. Henry James' writing style is characterised by its elaborate prose and attention to psychological detail. He masterfully employs ambiguity, leaving readers to interpret the story's events and characters in multiple ways. The novella's unreliable narrator and open-ended conclusion have sparked endless debates and interpretations among literary scholars. One notable curiosity is James' deliberate use of ambiguity, leaving readers with no definitive answers. This intentional vagueness has led to a myriad of interpretations, making the turn of the screw a favourite among literature enthusiasts who enjoy dissecting the subtleties of storytelling. In conclusion, The Turn of the Screw is a timeless masterpiece that continues to captivate readers with its unsettling blend of psychological complexity and supernatural ambiguity. Henry James' exploration of the thin line between reality and imagination ensures that this novella remains a haunting and thought-provoking classic in the realm of Gothic books. Number 8 the Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole stands as a cornerstone in the realm of Gothic literature, having laid the foundation for a genre that would captivate readers for centuries. Published in 1764, this novel is a tour de force of melodramatic storytelling, eccentric characters, and supernatural elements. The narrative revolves around the inhabitants of the Castle of Otranto, with the central theme being the curse that haunts the Manfred family. The plot kicks off with the untimely death of young Conrad, Manfred's son, crushed by a massive helmet that falls mysteriously from the sky. Manfred's desperate quest for an heir, coupled with his unrelenting pursuit of power, sets off a chain of events that involves love, betrayal, and the uncanny. Walpole skillfully weaves elements of romance, horror, and intrigue to create a gripping storyline that keeps readers on the edge of their seats. The characters in the Castle of Otranto are archetypal figures of the Gothic tradition, each contributing to the eerie atmosphere and suspense of the narrative. Manfred, the tyrannical lord, is driven by his desire for power and is a quintessential Gothic villain. Isabella, the damsel in distress, adds a touch of romantic tension, while Theodore, the young hero, brings an element of mystery and bravery. The supporting characters, such as the friar and the servant Bianca, contribute to the complexity of the plot, creating a rich tapestry of personalities that enhance the overall gothic experience. Horace Walpole, the author, 
was an influential figure in the 18th century literary scene and a prominent member of the English aristocracy. The Castle of Otranto is often considered the first Gothic novel, blending elements of romance and horror with a medieval setting. What adds an intriguing layer to the narrative is Walpole's claim that the story was a translation of an ancient Italian manuscript he had discovered. This claim, now widely debunked, was part of Walpole's playful and innovative approach to the creation of the novel. Moreover, Walpole's use of supernatural elements, including ghostly apparitions and the cursed castle, became hallmark features of Gothic fiction, inspiring future writers like Mary Shelley and Bram Stoker. The novel's impact extended beyond literature, influencing art, architecture, and even fashion during the Gothic revival in the 18th and 19th centuries. In conclusion, The Castle of Otranto remains a must-read for those interested in the origins of Gothic literature. Walpole's ability to blend the mysterious, the grotesque, and the romantic laid the groundwork for a literary tradition that continues to captivate and terrify readers to this day. The novel's enduring legacy speaks to its importance in shaping the landscape of literary imagination and the Gothic genre. Number 7. The Monk by Matthew Lewis is a captivating and controversial Gothic novel that delves into the dark realms of human desires, religious hypocrisy, and the consequences of unchecked passions. Published in the late 18th century, the novel is a significant work in the Gothic literary tradition. The story revolves around Ambrosio, a respected and virtuous monk whose devotion to his faith is compromised when he succumbs to temptation and engages in a series of sinful acts. As Ambrosio's moral decline accelerates, the novel takes readers on a thrilling and disturbing journey through occult rituals, forbidden love and supernatural encounters. The narrative is laden with twists and turns, keeping readers on the edge of their seats until the shocking conclusion. Ambrosio, the protagonist, undergoes a profound transformation from a pious monk to a morally corrupt figure, grappling with the consequences of his choices. The novel introduces a cast of intriguing characters, including the innocent and virtuous Matilda, the mysterious and malevolent Matilda's guardian, and the enigmatic supernatural beings that haunt Ambrosio's descent into darkness. Each character adds depth to the narrative, contributing to the overall atmosphere of dread and suspense. Matthew Lewis, who wrote The Monk at the age of 19, caused a sensation with the novel's explicit and controversial content. The novel explores themes of religious corruption, the supernatural, and the consequences of unchecked desires, challenging societal norms of the time. Lewis's daring approach to taboo subjects raised eyebrows and sparked debates, establishing the monk as a landmark work in Gothic literature. Number 6. The Shadow Over Innsmouth is a chilling masterpiece penned by the enigmatic H.P. Lovecraft, a pioneer in the realm of cosmic horror. Published in 1936, this novella takes readers on a journey into the mysterious and malevolent depths of the fictional town of Innsmouth, a place shrouded in eerie secrets and eldritch horrors. The narrative unfolds through a first-person account, as the unnamed protagonist recounts his ill-fated trip to Innsmouth. What begins as a curiosity-driven exploration transforms into a nightmarish ordeal, as he stumbles upon the town's dark history of forbidden pacts with aquatic entities known as the Deep Ones. Lovecraft skillfully weaves a sense of impending doom, blending elements of folklore and the supernatural to create an atmosphere of palpable dread. The revelation of the protagonist's ancestral connection to Innsmouth adds a personal layer to the unfolding horrors, making the tale all the more unsettling. Lovecraft's characters often grapple with the insignificance of humanity in the face of cosmic entities. The protagonist, a curious and unsuspecting traveller, becomes a vessel for the reader to experience the horrors of Innsmouth. Supporting characters, particularly the unnervingly peculiar townsfolk, contribute to the story's eerie ambience. The portrayal of the Deep Ones is a testament to Lovecraft's ability to evoke fear through the unknown, as their amphibious and otherworldly features elicit a sense of terror. Lovecraft's writing style is characterised by elaborate and archaic language, contributing to the atmosphere of otherworldly dread. 
The author employs a slow-burning tension, gradually building suspense and leaving readers on the edge of their seats. The use of cosmic horror, where the true horror lies in the incomprehensible and malevolent forces beyond human understanding, is a hallmark of Lovecraft's work. The shadow over Innsmouth stands as a testament to H.P. Lovecraft's enduring influence on the horror genre. Its legacy is evident in the countless works that draw inspiration from its cosmic horrors, making it a cornerstone of weird fiction. As readers traverse the shadowy streets of Innsmouth, they are confronted with a tale that transcends time, tapping into primal fears that linger in the recesses of the human psyche. Number 5. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde stands as a brilliant testament to the complexities of human nature. The Pursuit of Pleasure and the Consequences of Unchecked Hedonism, first published in 1890, Wilde's only novel remains a classic that continues to captivate readers with its thought-provoking themes and impeccable prose. The story revolves around the charming and handsome Dorian Gray, a young man whose portrait is painted by the artist Basil Hallward. Dorian makes a Faustian pact with his own portrait, wishing that he could remain forever young and beautiful while the painting ages and bears the scars of his debauched lifestyle. As Dorian indulges in a life of hedonism, his portrait becomes a grotesque reflection of his moral decay, serving as a haunting reminder of the consequences of his actions. Wilde weaves a narrative that delves into the corrupting influence of society, the pursuit of aestheticism, and the moral repercussions of a life without consequences. The novel raises profound questions about the nature of art, beauty, and the human soul, making it a timeless exploration of morality and self-indulgence. The characters in the picture of Dorian Gray are vividly drawn, each representing different facets of the society wild critiques. Dorian Gray himself is a complex character, initially innocent but gradually succumbing to the allure of decadence. Lord Henry Wotton, a charming and cynical character, serves as the catalyst for Dorian's moral decline, while Basil Hallward symbolises the conflict between artistic ideals and the corrupting influence of society. The supporting cast, including Sybil Vane, an actress entangled in Dorian's life, and various aristocratic figures, contributes to the multifaceted exploration of morality and consequence. Wilde's characters are not merely individuals, they embody societal norms and values, making them timeless and universally relevant. Oscar Wilde's writing style is characterised by wit, satire, and a keen sense of observation. His dialogues are sharp, filled with clever paradoxes and epigrams that reflect the intellectual atmosphere of a late 19th century. Wilde's use of aestheticism, a movement advocating the pursuit of beauty for its own sake, is evident throughout the novel, infusing it with a sense of decadence and allure. One of the intriguing aspects of Wilde's writing is the blend of comedy and tragedy. Despite the novel's dark themes, Wilde infuses moments of humour and irony, showcasing his mastery of balancing the sombre with the light-hearted. Wilde's life itself adds a layer of fascination to the novel, a prominent figure in the Victorian literary scene. Wilde faced personal and legal challenges due to his homosexuality. Ultimately, he was imprisoned for gross indecisi. These experiences inevitably influenced his work, infusing the picture of Dorian Gray with personal insights and a unique perspective on societal norms. In conclusion, the picture of Dorian Gray remains a literary masterpiece that transcends time. Oscar Wilde's exploration of morality, art and the consequences of unchecked desires continues to resonate with readers, making this novel a timeless classic that merits revisiting and contemplation. Number 4. Carmilla, a gothic novella written by Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu and first published in 1872, is a classic work that has left an indelible mark on the vampire genre. Often overshadowed by its more famous counterpart, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Carmilla is a gem that deserves recognition for its unique take on the vampire mythos and its contribution to the development of Gothic literature. Set in Styria, Austria, Carmilla unfolds as a narrative written by Laura a young woman recounting strange events that transpired during her stay at the remote and atmospheric Castle Karnstein. 
The tale begins with the arrival of Carmilla, a mysterious and captivating young woman, who becomes Laura's friend and ultimately her source of anguish. The plot takes an unexpected turn as Laura starts experiencing mysterious illnesses, nightmares, and a gradual physical decline. The tension builds as the sinister truth about Carmilla's identity and intentions is revealed. The narrative explores themes of forbidden love, obsession, and the supernatural, all against the backdrop of a crumbling castle, deep forests, and the eerie atmosphere that characterizes gothic fiction. The characters in Carmilla are intriguing and well-developed. Laura, the protagonist and narrator, is a sympathetic figure whose innocence and vulnerability make her a relatable character. Carmilla, on the other hand, is a fascinating blend of allure and menace, embodying the seductive and dangerous nature of vampire folklore. The interactions between Laura and Carmilla add depth to the story, exploring themes of desire and the blurred lines between love and horror. So, Joseph Sheridan Lefanu's Carmilla predates Bram Stoker's Dracula for 26 years, making it one of the earliest works in vampire literature. Lefanu's influence on the genre is undeniable, and many elements of Carmilla can be seen echoed in later vampire stories. One curiosity lies in the novella's exploration of homoerotic undertones. The relationship between Laura and Carmilla has been interpreted as having elements of lesbian attraction, a daring and unconventional theme for its time. Lefano's subtle and nuanced approach to this aspect adds a layer of complexity to the narrative. The writing style of Carmela is atmospheric and rich in detail. Lefano skillfully creates a sense of foreboding and dread, immersing the reader in the chilling world of Castle Karnstein. The epistolary format, with Laura narrating her own tale through letters, enhances the suspense and intimacy of the narrative. In conclusion, Carmilla is a haunting and evocative piece of Gothic literature that has stood the test of time. Le Fanu's contribution to the vampire genre, coupled with the novella's exploration of forbidden desires and its atmospheric prose, makes it a must-read for fans of classic horror and those interested in the evolution of vampire lore. Number 3. Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher is a haunting and atmospheric tale that transcends the boundaries of conventional horror literature. First published in 1839, this short story has endured as a classic example of gothic fiction, captivating readers with its psychological depth, eerie atmosphere, and poetic prose. The narrative revolves around an unnamed narrator who receives a letter from his friend. Roderick Usher, pleading for his immediate presence at the Usher mansion. Upon arrival, the narrator is struck by the desolate and decaying state of the once majestic house of Usher. The plot thickens as the narrator becomes entwined in the enigmatic and unsettling events that unfold within the mansion's walls. The story delves into themes of madness, decay, and the inescapable influence of the past on the present. The characters in The Fall of the House of Usher are few but intricately crafted. Roderick Usher, a tormented and fragile man, serves as the focal point of the tale. His twin sister, Madeline, adds an element of mystery and morbidity to the story. The narrator, while initially a detached observer, becomes increasingly entangled in the eerie events transpiring within the mansion. Poe's characters are not merely vessels for the plot, but embody the broader themes of psychological instability and the macabre. Roderick's descent into madness and the symbiotic relationship between the twins create an unsettling ambience that lingers long after the story concludes. Edgar Allan Poe, known for his mastery of the macabre and the mysterious, drew inspiration from various sources for the fall of the House of Usher. The story reflects his fascination with the Gothic tradition, which emphasizes the grotesque, supernatural, and psychological elements in literature. Poe's use of symbolism, vivid imagery, and intricate language contribute to the story's timeless allure. Furthermore, Poe's exploration of psychological horror in this tale is often considered groundbreaking. The unravelling mental state of Roderick Usher and the eerie atmosphere created within the decaying mansion paved the way for later gothic and horror literature. 
In conclusion, the fall of the House of Usher stands as a testament to Edgar Allan Poe's unparalleled ability to craft tales that transcend the ordinary. Its blend of psychological depth, supernatural elements, and gothic atmosphere makes it a literary gem that continues to captivate readers and influence the horror genre to this day. Number 2. Bram Stoker's Dracula stands as a cornerstone in the realm of gothic literature, weaving a chilling narrative that has left an indelible mark on the horror genre. Published in 1897, this classic novel continues to fascinate readers with its atmospheric setting, rich characters, and a plot that delves into the very essence of fear. The story unfolds through a series of journal entries, letters and newspaper articles, providing a multi-layered perspective on the mysterious events surrounding Count Dracula's move to England. The narrative centres around Jonathan Harker, a young solicitor who travels to Transylvania to assist the Count in a real estate transaction. As Harker begins to unravel the truth about his host, a series of bizarre incidents occur in England, involving Harker's fiancée Mina, her friend Lucy, and a group of determined individuals who come together to thwart the vampire's malevolent plans. Stoker's narrative is a masterful blend of suspense, horror, and psychological tension. The use of multiple narrators adds depth to the storytelling, allowing readers to experience the unfolding horror from various perspectives. The novel's pacing is deliberate, gradually building a sense of dread that climaxes in a thrilling confrontation between the forces of good and the embodiment of evil. The characters in Dracula are intricately crafted and contribute to the novel's enduring appeal. Count Dracula himself is a formidable antagonist, embodying the quintessential vampire archetype with his aristocratic demeanour, supernatural powers, and insatiable thirst for blood. Jonathan Harker and Mina Harker, formerly Murray, represent the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unspeakable horrors, while Van Helsing, the Dutch doctor, emerges as the leader of the group determined to defeat Dracula. One notable aspect is the portrayal of Lucy Westenra, whose transformation into a vampire serves as a metaphor for the allure and danger of forbidden desires. The characters' psychological struggles and the moral dilemmas they face add depth to the narrative, elevating Dracula beyond a mere horror story. Bram Stoker drew inspiration from a diverse range of sources to craft his iconic tale. His interest in Eastern European folklore, particularly the legends of Vlad the Impaler, contributed to the creation of Count Dracula. Stoker's meticulous research is evident in the novel's attention to detail regarding vampire lore and the occult, lending an air of authenticity to the supernatural elements. Dracula also reflects the anxieties and cultural shifts of the Victorian era, exploring themes of sexuality, colonialism, and the clash between modernity and ancient superstitions. Stoker's innovative use of various narrative forms was ahead of its time, influencing subsequent generations of writers and filmmakers in the horror genre. In conclusion, Bram Stoker's Dracula remains a timeless masterpiece that continues to enthrall and terrify readers. Its enduring legacy lies not only in its spine-tingling narrative, but also in its exploration of complex themes and the lasting impact it has had on the portrayal of vampires in popular culture. As a seminal work in the horror genre, Dracula is a testament to Stoker's literary prowess and his ability to tap into the deepest recesses of our collective fears. Number 1. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein has long captivated readers with its haunting narrative, exploring the perils of scientific ambition and the profound consequences of playing God. However, what adds an extra layer of fascination to this gothic masterpiece is the legendary tale behind its creation, which beckons us to explore the Villa Diodati in Switzerland, where the seeds of this enduring classic were sown. The year was 1816, infamously known as the year without a summer due to the aftermath of the volcanic eruption of Mount Tambora. In this gloomy atmosphere, Mary Shelley, along with her husband Percy Bysshe Shelley, Lord Byron and others, found themselves seeking refuge at the Villa Diodati on the shores of Lake Geneva. As the incessant rain confined them indoors, the group embarked on a challenge proposed by Byron to create ghost stories. 
Little did Mary Shelley know that her response to this challenge would birth one of the most iconic works in the literary canon. The legend goes that the idea for Frankenstein emerged from a vivid dream Mary had, inspired by discussions about the potential of galvanism and the reanimation of the dead. The eerie setting of the villa, shrouded in mist and surrounded by the natural beauty of Switzerland, seemingly fueled Mary's imagination as she crafted the tale of Victor Frankenstein and his ill-fated creation. To truly immerse oneself in the atmosphere that sparked the creation of Frankenstein, a visit to the Villa Diodati is a pilgrimage for literary enthusiasts. Stand on the shores of Lake Denever, gaze at the villa that witnessed the birth of this Gothic classic, and feel the echoes of the stormy night when the challenge was issued. As readers delve into Frankenstein, it's crucial to remember a nuance often overlooked. Frankenstein is the name of the scientist, not the monster. The creature created by Victor Frankenstein is a complex being a victim of abandonment and societal rejection rather than a mere embodiment of evil. Mary Shelley's narrative prompts us to question the moral implications of scientific discovery and ponder the consequences of neglect and prejudice. In the end, as you explore the world of Frankenstein, let the mysterious aura of Villa Diodati linger in your mind. If your travels ever lead you to Switzerland, pay homage to the birthplace of this Gothic masterpiece. And as you stand in awe of the picturesque surroundings that inspired Mary Shelley's creation, remember that Frankenstein is more than a horror story. It's a profound exploration of humanity, morality, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. As we conclude our exploration of the top 10 classic Gothic novels, we've delved into the shadowy realms of suspense, supernatural intrigue, and atmospheric landscapes. These timeless works have left an indelible mark on literature, captivating readers for generations, from Mary Shelley's groundbreaking Frankenstein to the chilling mysteries of Anne Radcliffe's The Mysteries of Udolpho. Each novel on this list represents a unique facet of the Gothic tradition. These tales are not mere relics of the past. They continue to inspire contemporary authors, filmmakers, and lovers of the macabre. As we traverse the haunted corridors of these narratives, we find themes that resonate across time, explorations of fear, the human psyche, and the mysteries that lie beyond our understanding. Whether you're a seasoned fan of gothic fiction or a newcomer seeking an atmospheric escape, the novels on this list offer a doorway into worlds where the eerie and the sublime converge. So, grab a candle, venture into the shadows, and immerse yourself in the timeless allure of these classic gothic masterpieces. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the dark and enchanting realms of literature. If you have a favourite gothic novel or if there's a classic we missed, share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more literary explorations. Until next time, may your reading adventures be as mysterious and captivating as the tales we've uncovered today. Happy reading with Maine's Dark Tales Unveiled.